Hey guys, welcome to my channel. You're watching In China, I'm Lin. First of all, I'm gonna spend a few seconds explaining the adjustment of our channel. During the last two months, we tried to deliver what is trending on Chinese social media, but it didn't take us much time to realize that there are some little problems, such as lack of logic. So I'm gonna do better on that, learning from some excellent YouTubers like Nathan Rich, who makes really enlightening videos. You see, there are plenty of people, including foreign YouTubers, making videos about China. Some of them, like Serpent ZA and Lao Y86, they claim to be objective. But as Chinese who knows well about what is really going on, we see right through the lies. So I have to admit that I'm not able to be totally objective. I'm Chinese, and that may be the starting point of my viewpoints. But it doesn't affect the intention that I make these videos. I'm still going to show you the reality in China, and I'm going to do it in a more logical and in-depth way. As you can see, Huawei is making some of the biggest waves in the wireless industry right now. In some reports of Western media, I saw they use the word pariah to describe this brand. But no one can deny that Huawei is the world's number one telecom supplier and number two smartphone maker. Over the past two weeks, Huawei has lost nearly every partner thanks to the US ban, including the high-profile splits with Google, Corning, and the ARM. But some of its major partners are staying quiet. Today in this video, I want to talk about what happens to companies that defy the Huawei ban. Let's take Microsoft as an, as an example. It's one of the Huawei's biggest software partners and still hasn't put out an official statement on ban. Microsoft did quietly pull Huawei laptops from its site, but we are still in the dark about the company's broader plans. The silence raises a very interesting question. If Microsoft or any other company defies the commerce order and keeps doing business with Huawei, then what kind of penalties would it face? Actually, I did some work. I looked up some similar cases. It turns out in the US, there is a raft of penalties for companies that defy export bans, ranging from the civil fines to deny orders. If the violations are flagrant enough, there can even be criminal penalties. But you know what? Given how much Microsoft relies on the government for its business, there will be plenty to lose before the threat of jail time was even raised. And that is why nearly everyone in the industry assumes that Microsoft will take the same tack as Google. But how about other partners of Huawei which are based outside the US? There are a few companies to talk about here. On May 23, TSMC, the chip manufacturer, said after careful consideration, it will maintain its shipments to Huawei. We are thankful to that, actually. You know, Huawei might be well prepared for the split with the ARM because it has amassed enough engineers to handle the next-gen IP core. But still, TSMC's statement came as a welcome breath of fresh air. Besides um, DHL, Toshiba, Panasonic, Lenovo Group, and Infineon will maintain their transactions with Huawei as well. There is one thing to take notice here. TSMC previously suspended certain shipments to Huawei, but later concluded that they do not violate restrictions imposed by the US. Actually, it became the first of Huawei's major suppliers to define the scale of its exposure to the new US constraints after taking advice from a leading US law firm which it declined to name. It makes me curious about how it makes sure not to violate the restrictions. Well, we need to take a second look on the US constraints. We know US placed the Huawei on the so-called entity list, which restricts exports of products incorporating US technology. A company cannot sell Huawei any product if the percentage of technology that originating from US is more than 25. It has left suppliers struggling to assess whether they are at risk of penalties. Many have voiced uncertainty over how to define the percentage. According to TSMC, after expert legal advice, it was confident that its sales to Huawei didn't cross the 25% threshold. You see, that is the key to the problem. Simply speaking, although currently almost no company in the world will take the risk to stand against the US government, however, the ban has no effect on TSMC at all. Infineon, um, Panasonic, and Toshiba we just mentioned above are all the same situation. So far, there's nothing to worry about for them. Besides, interests always come first for any company. 
In recent years, Huawei High Silicon has become the second largest cu customer of TSMC. I guess it would love to fight for such a big client. For sure, someone would worry that will TSMC stick to its stand if the US shows some muscle and keeps to pressure on it? Will TSMC take a threat? I guess the answer is no. First of all, almost all semiconductor companies in Europe and the US have no factories because they are too expensive. There are only two semiconductor factories in the US, GF and Intel. That is to say, almost all semiconductor manufacturing in the world is now concentrated in the East Asia. At the same time, the output of TSMC is very large. Almost 75% of the world's semiconductor is made by TSMC. So, if US government really wants to section TSMC strictly, the latter one will surely pull all semiconductor companies around the world to die together. By then, Apple, Microsoft and some other US companies will be hit hard. More importantly, the semiconductor manufacturing equipment is excluded from the content rules and this fighting will be closely examined by other key semiconductor suppliers such as Japan's Sony and Toshiba and South Korea's SK Hynix. Actually, they have to. Quoting the TSMC spokesman, over the past years, the global semiconductor industry has built a very complex and interconnected supply chain. If there is a disruption in the, in the supply chain, there is definitely an impact. The trade tensions and action against Huawei could exacerbate the already painful semiconductor downturn. Alright, to be concluded, I think it makes sense that some US companies and those closely related to US cut supplies to Huawei because, you know, that's a critical choice. You have to vary the laws and there's no much to blame. As to other partners of Huawei, first of all, the restrictions are much smaller. Secondly, economically speaking, Huawei is a partner that's too profitable to give up. And lastly, the whole industry is totally interconnected and the action against Huawei is already having a quite bad influence on the industry. So the companies should consider finding their own way out. Anyhow, Huawei is offering the best 5G technology that many countries simply can't resist so far. Okay guys, that's it for today. I would like to see your views on Huawei, on this trade war, and this company's actions against Huawei. Looking forward to see your comments below. I'll see you next time.